and early summer is the perfect time to pop some pumpkins into your patch. They're a pretty easy growing crop if you follow a few simple tips. Pumpkins need a well-drained, rich soil, so I'm going to mix in plenty of compost and pelletised chook manure. Then I'll mound the soil into a little hill and plant into it. These are butternuts. They produce lovely, nutty-flavoured, peanut-shaped fruit. My favourite. Space them about 40 or 50 centimetres apart so they've got room to wander. Now, if you've got limited horizontal space, you can grow them up a sturdy trellis as well. I'm also going to plant some Jap seedlings. These guys are brilliant roasters and the bright orange flesh is super sweet. I'll give them a 60 centimetre spacing though, because they are vigorous growers. And don't forget to have some mulch on hand. You'll need it to reduce moisture loss and also help suppress weeds. Keep the water up to them over summer. They're hungry beasts and won't take kindly to being left to dry out on a hot summer's day. It's so nice to grow your veggies organically. So I'm gonna dose these pumpkins monthly with this certified organic fertilizer, Eco Amino Grow. And in three to four months time, I'll be picking perfect pumpkins. And last but not least, I've got a pumpkin pillow tip talk for you. You see, pumpkins produce both male and female flowers, and it's the females that turn into this. You can help pollination along by dusting the pollen from the male flowers onto the female flowers using a paintbrush. Fairies love to hide in the garden. So why not create a magical miniature garden for them to play in? This is a great project for the little ones, but big kids can also have hours of fun doing this. Start by using a shallow bowl or container. So I'm using an Artavazi Roma bowl in bright turquoise, which will really appeal to the kids. But you could use low terracotta bowls, even bonsai pots to do it. Then get your hands on some petite, fairy friendly flowers, like this white alyssum, which has honey scented blooms. Or you might like to use lobelia, which is compact and has petite little blue flowers. I've also got some summery looking portulacas and some thyme for the fairies to play in. You could also use soft leaf plants like lamb's ears for them to lay their head on. To make an enchanting little garden, you'll also need some pint sized furniture and accessories. You'll fall in love with these magical mica mini garden sets. Before planting, it helps to lay everything out first. Have fun and experiment with lots of different designs. Once you're happy with the layout, get planting. Now complete the picture with decorative toppings. A few stepping stones and some fairy dust to finish and you've created an enchanting little wonderland. Now all we have to do is wait for the fairies to arrive. Creating miniature gardens is addictive, so you don't have to stop there. How about creating a miniature rainforest with indoor plants and pretty pink furniture? Or a seaside garden with succulents, sand and shell toppings? There's nothing better than lounging around on a lazy Sunday afternoon on a lush green lawn. So act now to get yours in tip-top condition. Starting from the ground up is key. Spring and summer is a great time to boost the soil beneath your lawn. If you've got a heavy clay soil, then water over some EcoFlow gypsum. It'll help break up the clay. And this handy clip onto your hose pack makes application a breeze. Because it's a liquid, you don't need to fork holes in the lawn before applying it. And it's faster acting than the powdered alternative. Even the most water-wise lawn varieties will still need watering, especially when it's stinking hot. Watering them deeply once or twice a week is better than a few random sprinkles. And if you can, water them first thing in the morning, because watering at night creates the perfect environment for lawn diseases. During the warmer months, I like to apply Eco Hydrate once a month. What it does is actually absorb humidity from the air and funnel it down to the roots where it's needed. If we get into summer drought conditions and water restrictions, slightly raising the height of your mower blade can help reduce water loss through evaporation from the soil. If you've been watering and feeding your lawn properly, but you're still getting brown patches, then you might have an infestation of curl grubs. These fat, juicy white grubs feed on the roots of your lawn and other plants. Dilute some eco neem into a watering can and water over the affected patches to easily control these pests. Now all that's left to do is sit back and enjoy your gorgeous green lawn. 
see these plants in all their blooming beauty and two words instantly come to mind, unique and impressive. And these African beauties are called leucospermums and they are as marvellous in the garden as they are cut for the vase. And when you cut the flowers and use them indoors, it's a great way to prune the plant and keep them compact and looking good. Make your garden and home sing with Rigoletto. It's fiery and fabulous with intense red orange flowers in spring. To enjoy it indoors, simply cut the flower stem, leaving about 10 centimetres of leafy stem on the plant. Or get the party started with Mardi Gras ribbons. Perfect for hedges, screens and pretty pots, with masses of blazing orange-yellow blooms that rock the garden. So successful is another winning choice for decorative screens or hedges, with flamboyant bright orange flowers in spring. Or take your garden to new heights with So Exquisite, which boasts big, red, rocket-shaped blooms. You'll also love Ceruria Blushing Bride, which is compact and perfect for pots. Flaunt the dainty, long-lasting flowers in a potted garden or create a posy of blooms worthy of the big day. Leucospermums are in the same happy family as the Australian Banksias and Grevilleas. Because they do have a native plant look about them, you'll often see them used in Australian native posies. But I like to mix things up a bit by throwing in a few exotic beauties. So I've got some Star of Bethlehem flower here, which is still in bud. I'm just going to mix it with some beautiful sort of sunset looking roses. This is Matricaria, which is a member of the chamomile tribe. Throw a little bit of that in. And then, whoops, <laughs> and then just top it all off with some bay foliage to really make those flowers shine. When I think of rhubarb, I automatically think of warm rhubarb crumble. But I have a chilled chia and rhubarb pudding that's perfect for the summer months as breakfast or dessert. I'm starting with the rhubarb compote by chopping up the rhubarb into chunks. When I cook with rhubarb, I'm always taken back to my grandfather's garden. I grew up loving that tangy flavor of rhubarb in my grandmother's cooking but I always remember Gran telling me never to give the rhubarb leaves to the chooks because they're poisonous. There are a few things that rhubarb pairs so well with, like orange and ginger, which is what I'm using. Of course, you'll need a touch of sweetener. I like to use coconut sugar and the juice of half an orange. Cover the tray with alfoil and pop it in the oven. While the rhubarb's roasting, I'm gonna whip together my chia pudding. Now, chia pudding is so simple. All it is, is chia seeds and some liquid. I like to use drinking coconut milk. So I'm using half a cup of chia to two cups of liquid. As soon as you add your liquid, give the chia seeds a good mix with a fork so they don't clump up. To give our chia pudding a little bit of sweetness, I'm using some pure maple syrup. Plus, a teaspoon or so of pure vanilla extract. Whisk that in, and this will naturally thicken and become gelatinous over the next 20 or so minutes. But, here's one I prepared earlier. Now to layer our yummy pudding. I'm using martini glasses for a bit of Gardenette's flair. And first up, in goes the chia. Next, a layer of your favourite yoghurt. And of course, we need the rhubarb. Mmm, smells delish. So just use a fork and gently mash up the rhubarb. And you can see that it's come together and cooked down really nicely. Once your rhubarb has cooled down, you can top your chia pudding with the gorgeous rhubarb compote. Cheers, ladies, to a healthy breakfast or dessert. Mmm, I love the rhubarb.